Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this uh, Thursday night, November 23rd, 2023, about 1043 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the globe shows a 1.2 uh, into the area of California. Uh, we did see some divergent boundary activity up here north of Greenland, well north of Iceland as well, up here away at the top of the globe. It looks like that may have enhanced a little bit of earthquake activity here across the Iceland region. The last 12 hours of earthquake activity showing somewhat elevated movement here with about 72 earthquakes. A handful of earthquakes here um, throughout the area, I suppose. Uh, looking at the Grindavik area down here of Iceland, the region of interest in terms of volcanic potential, uh, showing a pretty good little swarm of earthquake activity. Um, nothing major, nothing uh, in terms of uh, increased activity now the let me check out the gnss uh deal here this is well that's not really going to do anything let me go back over here i'm a little bit tired it's crazy how turkey will make you super duper tired not even joking so i'm kind of i'm going to call it bedtime here soon um this was put out this morning. There's strong indications uh, between the Cresto Uplift in the Savart Singhi area and the formation of the magma intrusion. Uh, and they still think the magma is uh, rising in an area near the Hagafell region, which is northeast, just barely northeast of the Grindavik area of Iceland. Uh, but they're saying that the likelihood of a sudden eruption there within the area, within the Grindavik area, is decreasing daily. We'll have to watch this. Um, you know, if anything, uh, we should see further earthquake activity if this thing is going to enhance anymore. Uh, there's a separate swarm up here. Uh, let's see. This is a, it looks like that is along the plate boundary here. Divergent boundary. You can kind of see it here uh, in a little different shade of uh, colors here across the land of Iceland. And uh, that activity is stirring up well north of our region of interest here so not for sure if we got maybe some magma moving around further up north towards this area but uh, it's definitely pretty active in terms of uh, the swarming that's occurring within this area right here now not for sure exactly what we got there for uh we'll have to check this out tomorrow uh, when i'm a little bit more pre better prepared in terms of looking at the maps but uh, we'll keep an eye on this, see if this increases overnight with this little separate swarm um, and see if uh, overall seismic activity picks up here across the region. But it is located very close to one of these volcanoes out here. Uh, what is that? Hing Hingil? Uh, last eruption here was a long time ago, it looks like. Um, yeah, about uh, 100 CE. Quite a bit of time has passed, uh, and I'm pretty close. I'm pretty certain that's uh, about the closest volcano area. But either way, things are uh, uh, getting kind of interesting up there. We'll continue to watch that, see uh, if anything changes in terms of uh, the uptick there across Iceland. Uh, the Big Island of Hawaii looks like things have calmed down nicely in terms of earthquake activity. Inflation is still up there on the chart. Let me give a real quick glance here at the inflation data across the uh, Kilauea volcano area on the big island UWE station. Well, it looks like we're taking a nosedive <laughs> in the last six hours or so. Um, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if this kind of follows these little... There's which, With each trend here, with each inflation trend, there's uh, looks like maybe three little steps here. Uh, and it looks obvious on these other ones as well. So we'll see if this one maybe comes back up tomorrow, goes back down, then comes back up, then goes down. Kind of an interesting pattern that's going on there for sure with the uh, inflation data, but definitely still stuff stirring up underneath the uh, Kilauea volcano. Just nothing popping yet. All right, uh, back to the earthquake map here. California seeing uh, some slight activity here. Uh, let's see what we got for the last 24 hours. Uh, 3.0 near Bridgeport. Now that is north of the Long Valley Super Volcano out here. Uh, looks like the Robinson Creek Fault section here, just north of there. Um, nothing big, just a little three-pointer. 
And uh, generally small earthquake activity across this area of California today. Nothing major going on across the Pacific Northwest. Um, a look at the trimmer map here tonight along the Cascadia shows, well, that's about it. 27 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone uh, in the last 24 hours. So really not that big of a deal. Texas definitely been popping out here. We did see a four-pointer, a 4.2 to be exact, earlier this afternoon out there. Near Ackerley, quite a bit of oil fields out here in this area. I remember checking out this region earlier this year. It is littered with thousands of oil pumping operations out here in wastewater disposal ponds. Uh, and that's where that four-pointer struck out here. Texas in all has been very active. Uh, i got to remember the North American plate out here. Uh, let's see which map I can use that on. Um... Well, the North American plate is always almost, you know, underneath some stress here. You can kind of see the, uh, this looks a little blurry on my end. I'm not for sure why. Uh, but the North American craton is part of the North American plate here. That's relatively stable uh, in terms of any type of deformation. Of course, the Rocky Mountains here push up right up against that North American craton. Uh, but the North American plate in general is always underneath some type of stress. And uh, it looks as though these uh, weaker points... Uh, due to all the uh, potential fracking and pumping operations out here, uh, are, have been getting hit uh, with a lot of earthquake activity. Look at the last 30 days of earthquake activity just just in, uh, let me zoom in here a little bit more so we can get the exact measurement, just in the last 30 days here, um, so over 700 earthquakes. That's a lot of earthquake activity out there. Uh, these guys are getting more earthquakes in California. Pretty crazy. And this will continue, no doubt. In fact, we'll probably, throughout time uh, in the future here, we'll probably see this map spread out in this fashion all across the land uh, where oil pumping operations are prevalent. And, uh, you know, you can zoom in anywhere out here across Texas and they are just littered with uh, uh, these huge pumping operations. Big time money makers. Look, look at this area right here. There's not even a, not even a couple feet in between each of these... Uh, these oil pumping operations. So, crazy. Uh, either way, earthquake activity will continue out there in Texas for sure. A little swarm of activity out here across the Puerto Rico Trench here in the last 24. Uh, looks like a couple threes in there as well. This is Puerto Rico Trench. Uh, there's one deep earthquake, but that's way back over here. 189 kilometers deep here. A couple different subduction zones. You've got the Marot uh, Marotos Trough. Puerto Rico Trench up here, a couple other ones uh, into this area, and of course a major subduction zone over here. Uh, very sensitive area in terms of the uh, potential for large earthquake activity. So a little bit of swarming, kind of watching that region here. Uh, see if anything kicks back up. Uh, South America, handful of earthquakes. Uh, let's see what else we got there. 5.1 out in China, it looks like. Let's see what's going on out here. 5.1, but USGS reporting this is a 4.6. Still, uh, a little bit of earthquake activity way out there. Uh, it's a movement out in Afghanistan, of course, Turkey uh, earthquake activity this morning. Uh, latest earthquake here down in the Vanuatu area, 4.8, 63 kilometers deep here across this plate boundary. Uh, New Zealand zone uh, down here. It looks like some threes kicking off. Back over here, uh, across the Indonesia Islands area, once again, we're getting some deeper movement quakes. Notice that ring raised way off the globe here. Now, that's not a big one, but we definitely got some stuff stirring up in this area where it's been clustering nicely uh, here recently. Uh, so keep an eye on this area potentially for some larger scale movement. Uh, let's see here. Going to jump into space weather activity. Just going to keep this a little short tonight. By the way, we still have some wind out here. The winds pick it up. Almost as strong as what it was earlier when the power started to go down. Uh, hopefully the stream stays up. If it doesn't, um, I'll get to it uh, first thing in the morning. Uh, hopefully it stays up, though. All right, one of the more active regions out here in uh, in this cycle. Uh, look how huge this region is here. We got uh, quite a few sunspots in this whole sector of a uh, cluster of sunspots. Um, a couple of these are diminishing. We're noticing uh, maybe some newer regions back over here getting a little bit more complex. We'll definitely have to keep an eye on several uh, sunspot regions out here as they are now 
Well, they're pretty much facing the Earth square dead on, and uh, any X flare or major uh, CME that would be produced is uh, would definitely be uh, or directed right and geo effective. Uh, so this region down here looks super complex. There quite a bit of different intermixing of the colors, and a new region way out here. Just getting a little glimpse of it right now. That's another active region. Uh, like I say, it's been quite a while since I've seen this type of energy out there on the sun. Look at these sunspots out here. That is crazy looking. After a couple of weeks of it being quiet, the sun is appearing to wake up. Uh, we're starting to get back up here in the solar index charts here. The SFI, that's the energy, so to speak, is uh, close to 200. Um, and with that, that would definitely put us back up here. Um, well, but this is on average here, but definitely be well above what we witnessed back in uh, in October. So the energy is picking up. 3490 harbors a beta gamma delta class. The same with 3500 um, and beta gamma for the uh, 3492. Now those are some of the more complex sunspot regions that harbor the potential for some X flare probability. So 3490 and 3500. Uh, 3490, 3500 is this big one down here. Uh, 3490 has, I mean, when this photo was taken, it looks like it was fairly complex. But if you look at it right now, uh, it looks as though it may be stabilizing slightly with some new development back over here to the west, among some other sunspots. But either way, uh, we'll still keep an eye on the majority of the sunspots that are now facing the Earth. And, of course, a couple new, one, new ones that will be... Uh, in sight here pretty soon. Uh, we are consistently flaring here with a uh, sea flare activity. And uh, definitely watch that because uh, these X flares can pop up out of the blue just like that. And the UV filter ray out here shows quite the active region here. Um, this one right here almost, almost looks like it wants to flare up right now. Uh, so keep an eye on it. That is the 35 or 34, uh, what is it, 3490 or 3590? 3490. Uh, that's the one that harbors the uh, beta gamma delta class. So um, crazy. Definitely watch this. Getting pretty active here, folks. Um, nothing on the forecast here for the three day, but that could change here with the very active regions of the sun now in the Earth view. All right, numerical models out here. I want to see how much this changed because I was looking at this earlier. Um, and this is actually really impressive here. I ran a model run up until the December, December 9th time period for total accumulated precipitation. We have some measurable precipitations out here in Northern California, well over a foot of rainfall. Uh, and that's in my neck of the woods as well. Um, that's pretty impressive. That's a huge storm, super storm coming out here in Northern California, dumping uh, over a foot of rain out here uh, in that time period. I want to see. I want to see how much has changed out here since that previous model run. Um, looks like we got it all covered here. Uh, the storm that is in question, you'll see it when it kicks up out here across the West Coast. There's one of, that's kind of a light, weak storm out of the Northwest. I think it's this one right there that did have the potential to drop quite a bit of rain. It's changed a little bit though, but then we got more, st uh, more storms behind that. Um, but it looks as though... Let me check out the total accumulated precipitation out here. That model run, it's changed, right? Look at that. Definitely has changed from uh, earlier to right now. We're talking still, that's pretty decent rainfall, about four to five inches or so here around Chico, but it could come back. Remember how we were looking at this uh, last week? We we're looking at this type of run and it was consistent for a little while and then it dropped off to nothing. So. Uh, it's getting to that point of the year where, you know, these weather models are not super accurate, but at least we're not seeing any dominant high pressure out here, uh, across the West coast, but rainfall is welcome. That's for sure. And it looks like we're going to have a little bit coming up regardless, uh, as we head into December. All right, folks, uh, I am out of here. By the way, this, uh, earth master store is up. And running, I will leave a link here um, into the uh, description of this video. We got some new merchandise out here. And they're actually pretty cool. And um, many different sizes, many different colors. They're just not all black or white here. 
Uh, there's many different ones that uh, you can choose from. And on the back, we got the Earthmaster logo logo here, which is pretty cool. I kind of like the front. I like the uh, Earthmaster uh, seismograph station reading right there. It's pretty cool. And uh, there's, like I said, there's many different sizes. There's uh, for women on here as well. We got different colors. Pretty neat. So if you're interested, go check it out. We got sweaters on here as well. The uh, uh, official Earthmaster store uh, is on streamlabs.com the Earthmaster, and of course I will leave a link here in this uh, update video so go check it out if you're interested get yourself a uh, something warm for this winter we'll catch you guys back here sometime uh, tomorrow Friday right I hear the wind out there so hopefully uh, things hold up we'll catch you guys back uh, back here tomorrow sometime have a good night